hello uh my name is austin samargo and uh the video this video is for the questions right uh is china communist and uh what is <laughs> a communist country uh first of all the first thing to say is that uh there's no such thing as a communist country because the the principle of communism is to have a stateless cashless and classless society you know where everybody contributes according to their uh, ability and the, all the individual needs of all the members are met uh, all the needs of the individual members are met um i think it's important to remember that communism is an ideal a concept a uh, utopian society that we marxists strive to reach you know so we have uh, successfully Marxists throughout history have theorized and practiced, you know, uh, socialism, the redistrib redistribution of wealth, you know, by legislative policy. And how do you get that legislative policy? You have to have a worker's democracy. You know, the workers have to be uh, in charge of the government. So the thing is, China is not a communist country. This is just a thing that the CIA and all these uh, government organizations try to push out this propaganda and they say, oh, these are communist countries, but they're not communists. They themselves, they say they are socialists. You know what I'm saying? Because commu communism, uh, there's a theory about primitive communism, you know, before we had factories and all that. But really, uh, true communism uh, in modern society, you know, the utopia that we, we want we want to create here on Earth, heaven on Earth. That, that hasn't happened yet, you know? So the purpose of constructing a socialist state is to consolidate a proletariat power, you know, the power of the workers. And so, he, l let me, let me, I'm gonna explain basically how it works. You know, uh, it, it won't be super detailed, you know, cause this is just uh, to give you a basic understanding of it. But uh, I'm gonna uh, ex explain here, you know, how it basically works, right? Okay, so back in the day, Marx and Engels themselves, they theorized, they say, hey, uh, society, they study history, and they showed how um, society is always a dictatorship of one class of people over another. You know, before we'd have emperors, kings, queens, uh, feudalism, the lords and ladies who govern all the land, you know, and uh, this was the, you know, the elite class dominating the rest of society, the common people. Today, we still have this, but it's just in a different form because now the common people have civil liberties, but they don't have true economic freedom and they're subjugated to have to work to these people because uh, society's moved in that direction you know, where we have these cities and we have all these people, uh, uh, they need the system to survive. You know, you, when you're living in a city, you can't, uh, it's not always doable to just grow your own food, you know, and you, you got to depend on the system of capitalism. So, um, it has been successfully pointed out that, um, When the capitalists run society and control the government, as they do here in the United States and, and most European countries and most countries in the world, as a matter of fact, when these capitalists are given power to control our government and our politics and our economy, they're, of course, just going to make it better for themselves, you know? And they pass these this legislative policy, they bribe the politicians, they call it lobbying, and they do all this. And so to fix that, we, we Marxists, you know, Marx, Marx first, you know, that's why it's called Marxism. There's a concept called uh, the dictatorship of the proletariat. Because right now we're in the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. You know, the bourgeoisie are the capitalists, the ones who we have to work for, that most of society has to work for, and who control most of the wealth and, uh, you know, all, all these uh, Congress candidates and all these people, they're all millionaires, you know, they're, they're all, they're all rich, you know, and they get that way from exploiting and taking the surplus value out of somebody else's labor, you know, just because they were blessed enough to own these things. Now, uh, you know, they can keep on using it because 
the the basic principle to point out is that the bourgeoisie they can take their money and just keep on putting it back in investments and these inv investments you know uh because of the way the economic structure social economic structure of capitalism is set up these investments will keep on they'll pay a worker just enough to survive and the worker has to use that money that the, that little bit of money to get their necessities to get their food their shelter and all this you know so the capitalist takes the rest of the value like say you make a thousand dollars a day you know your boss giving you 15 20 dollars an hour you know they're taking all that all that money and then they can use that to pay more workers and they they were these workers are what you call wage slaves so communism is when the means of production all the factories all the things that make money you know and, and make materials that we need in society are all publicly owned you know and, and it's voted on by the workers what what we should do and you know it's about improving the material conditions of the people you know so this dictatorship of the proletariat is a concept that uh marx and engels originally talked about and then uh lenin actualized it he 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 carried the torch and he uh that's why there's marxism leninism marxism is the study of the class nature of society and the uh using dialectical and historical material materialism to improve the conditions you know uh, of the common people and the workers and leninism is a science of revolution how to uh you know take uh use the power of the masses to take power and consolidate a state state apparatus a state structure that's uh controlled by the workers not the capitalists who subject them so it has been successfully theorized and shown to be pretty accurate that uh if if a group party of communists that's why they call it a communist country because the government is run by a one-party system but that one party is a workers party it's the communist party and the communist party uh strives to improve the lives of the workers you know and consolidate proletariat power until capitalism is defeated worldwide you know that's what uh china vietnam cuba laos they're all on this mission and, and, and you know th they're all trying to hold this proletariat power this working class power you know so eventually the whole world the workers all across the world can be liberated so l let me describe uh basically how it works right there's a principle called democratic centralism democratic centralism is uh every issue everything that the party discusses they discuss you know in length and they debate all the points and they let everybody speak right so when when they do that and and everybody's had time to talk and, and say whatever you know uh they, and they've done debated everything then they make a vote right and what, whatever the vote the majority votes that's the party line and official party policy from then on and they continue that you know you know you know until like the next congress or they come together they it's they have democracy just like here it's just that it's a dem workers' democracy, and the, there's two types of people in the party, right? A majority of workers and a minority of intellectuals. The workers make up the majority of the party, so they have the voting power, you know. And the intellectuals, they call them. That's a technical term. The intelligentsia, you know, they're uh, like the politicians and people who who spend people who are real high up in, in the party and they spend all day studying the lives of the workers and keeping track of the lives of workers and you know taking in ideas on how to improve them and scientifically using social science sociology they think of how to improve the material conditions of the workers and how to protect the state because the state is consolidating the workers democracy and the workers power so these intellectuals they mainly come up with the ideas but it is a majority of workers so whatever is debated and discussed you know the workers debate too and give all their opinions but the majority of these five-year plans you hear about and these policies they pass as socialist nations they they do this they present it to the masses and the masses votes 95 percent of the population of china supports the government because the literally like every sphere of uh jobs you know a a everything is in the party all different types of industry they are connected to the party and the party there's a line said by Mao Zedong you know it says uh from the masses to the masses 
you know it's the it's like making the government one big union so uh, I hope that's been a sufficient explanation. I'll put some links down below of some resources so you can better uh, look this up if you want. And uh, I got this book I wrote. You can uh, comment or something if you want to buy it from me directly or there's an Amazon link I'm going to put down there too. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a good day or night or whatever it is. <laughs>